started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Welcome back to Make Life Fun Show. Today we are speaking to Melissa Clampett. She is the host of the Reawakened Mom podcast, and she is here today to talk to us about self-care and self-love within, being a mom and how to be the best you. Melissa, welcome. I loved your posts, your dancing. I loved it. I'm all pumped up. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So good. So good. I was just talking earlier with Masako about how we're just going to be dancing in 2022. And then you posted that. I was like, yeah. Absolutely. Our- like, it's so exciting. That's how I totally get pumped up. Like, before I interview somebody or before I do something like big, I'm like, got to get my energy moving in my body. Yeah. Absolutely. I am so excited to have you here and have this conversation. And I would love to know what it is that you're passionate about right now. Oh my gosh. For me right now, I am passionate about talking to women about refinding themselves. I'm a mom. I have three boys. I have a 12, a 15 year old, and then I have a 28, almost 29 year old stepson. So, you know, so many times as women and moms, we put other people first. So I'm really all about right now, just refinding finding who you are, who you truly are, putting all the other labels aside and digging into your heart and your soul and finding what really, who is really in your soul and who are you and what do you love and what brings you joy? That is really what I am passionate about right now. And that's such a great passion because it's so needed, especially right now. Yeah. Like the world that we're living in now needs so much, so much of that love and so much of that light for us to shine. And that's what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Cause it's, you know, I mean, let's be real. You have kids and you love your kids and you love them so much. And you know, when I first had my first son 15 years ago, I was like, I am going to be with my children all the time. I will love my children. I will take them to get my hair cut. I will do all the things with my child, but mama needs a break sometimes. Let's be real. And so, you know, it's just rediscovering how you can find those little snippets of time in your day for you and what makes you happy so that you can be the best mom. You can be the best wife, the best person, the best co-creator, the best entrepreneur that you can be. And if you're always giving, 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 then you have nothing left for yourself. Like I said, right place. Like in this community, it is all about pouring from that overflow, like filling yourself up so much that you can't help but give that extra from a place of like, there's so much. Yeah. So how did you get to this place where you want to help women find themselves? For me, I think it was being lost myself. I used to be a school teacher. My husband and I currently own a restaurant. You know, I have my boys. They're in so many activities. And so for many years, I mean, even as much as like not, well, not with the pandemic, but we were always on the go. So I was always taking them to a sporting event, always taking them to this, making sure that all of their needs are met, which is great. That's what we do as moms, right? But I put myself last. And so I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't doing the things that I used to love to do with the working out. I used to do roller derby, like all these things that I loved, I wasn't doing. And so I felt lost and I was getting resentful. I was getting angry, blaming other people, a little bit snippier around my house. And it just didn't feel like the person that I know that I am. Uh, It was almost like an out of body experience. I'm like, this isn't me. Like, I don't want to be a yeller. Like, I don't want to lose my temper, but I don't know what else to do because I have no tools in my toolbox right now because I've given and I've given and I've given and I'm, I'm stuck. So for me, it was just finding little ways that I could get unstuck and, you know, what those things would be. And it was just taking a little bit of time for me. It started as going to the gym 
you know, early in the morning. And so I would go, go to the gym. And so it was just finding those things for me that were getting me back to Melissa. We're getting me back to the things that brought me energy and brought me joy so that I could be the best mom that I know that I can be because we're, we're our role models for our kids. So, you know, I want them to see like, you can take care of yourself and still be able to take care of other people. I love that so much. Yeah. Cause you can try and change everybody else. And, you know, I do have a little bit of control issues. I do like to try to control things. And so I'm working on getting better, but I was like, but if I'm not okay with me and I'm trying to change other people, that's a reflection of something I see in myself. So if I'm looking and I'm trying to say thanks to my kids or my husband or my friends about things, Oh, well, maybe you should try this or this, then that's probably something that I need to work on. I need to go work on that. And so that's really how it all just kind of starts. And every day it's a practice and a journey and my word of the year this year is joy and so it's really coming back to myself and what brings me joy yep brings you joy I love that what brings you joy and coming back to that and that word for the year of joy is like I love it we have it within ourselves to find that joy we have it within ourselves to decide that that's what we're going to look for and when we look for that we're going to only see more of that right Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I have so many years, I always do a word of the year. So I love to do a vision board. This year, my vision board was a lot of the things that how I want to feel. So how I want to feel throughout my day, throughout my household, throughout my family, throughout my relationships. And just the word joy just kept coming up for me because I know if I find joy in my relationships, if I find joy in, you know, my household, in, you know, my relationships with my husband and my kids and my friends and my businesses, you know, and finding joy and doing a podcast and social, like all the things, then I know that abundance is going to come to me because I'm, I'm having fun and it feels good. So if it doesn't feel good to me, then I say no, because I have such crazy energy awareness that if I do something that I don't want to be doing, like it can take me out, I swear, for like a week. Like, I'm like, I just need to go sleep because I'm a place I don't want to be. I made an obligation. I said yes. And I don't, I shouldn't have said yes. So I didn't set a good enough boundary. So I've gotten really good at, well, I should say I've gotten a lot better because it's never perfect, but it's always working about setting those boundaries because if not, then I can turn into a she-hawk sometimes. (laughs) What's your definition of a she-hawk? You know, Bruce Banner and he's like a nice person and he's smart. And then all of a sudden something sets him off and he's like, and so... As a woman and a mom, you know, trying to do all the things well and perfectly and amazingly. And then if something doesn't go your way or somebody says something or does something or puts something in the wrong place, like I could turn into Mm -hmm. (laughs) She-Hawk. So it's kind of like losing, losing yourself quickly in a way that you don't really want to be losing yourself. And then maybe having to come back later and apologize for the way that She-Hawk acted. (laughs) Oh, I love that you gave her a name. We all have that. It's a subconscious programming. It's, it happens so quickly. It's like the blink of an eye or faster. It's so true. Those triggers in our mind that we've been practicing, we've been practicing something for so long that when we go to change that behavior, We do. We have that side of us that wants to always come out and we have to gain that awareness to come back to like, no, this doesn't feel good. This is not the person I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's learning those little, you know, tricks in your toolbox, whatever Mm -hmm. they may be like having a pause, you know, taking a deep breath, putting yourself in a mommy timeout, be like, I need to go to the bathroom real quick or go in my closet. Like I will be right back. You know, and putting yourself in a mommy timeout real quick to go compose and be like, is this really a big deal? Do I really need to be reacting this way? Is it really about my child, my spouse? Is it really about them or is it about me? And so that's what I am still in the process of working on and doing, you know, a lot of meditation, a lot of breath work, a lot of mindfulness, and really focusing on those things so that I can be present in the moment and and think, is this really a big deal? Like, is this going to matter in five minutes? That's a good question. Is this going to matter in five minutes? Most of the time, the things that trigger us and freak us out, it's just old. So it doesn't even, it doesn't even relate. Right. Yeah. So I love that you're saying that and that having that toolbox also, like you have to have these tools that you use when you're trying to become the best version of yourself. 
Yeah. And, and for I'm you, you were saying, gathering tools for those toolbox, you know, I'm yeah. always gathering. So it's never like your toolbox is shut and you don't mm-hmm. ever need to gather more. I'm always adding more. Like I'm a hoarder of tools. <laughs> <for my toolbox. laughs> I'm right I there. One of every color. <laughs> <laughs> right there with you. Yes. You got to have those tools. It's like, I was talking on my Instagram earlier this week about how I didn't know anything about inner child work until I met Kathy, which is how me and you have crossed paths is through your turn to podcast course and inner child work was a tool that shifted so much for me, like night and day, like the more I soothe that younger Josie it brought her life and then it brought me life. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like having one tool, then you heal a part of you and then there's more and then there's more. And so you always healing and growing and healing and growing. And it's just like, you just keep evolving into that. Yeah, it is. And it's beautiful. And you know, it's never anything to be like, Oh, it's all a learning experience. And so Mm -hmm. if you didn't have that experience, then you wouldn't really be who you are. And so it's Mm -hmm. taking that, recognizing it, loving it and being like, take the lesson, you know, that from that moment, and then you're just constantly learning and evolving, you know, and, and you're just shedding your, shedding your skin, you know, each year, each season, like you shed it again. Okay. Here I am again. I'm fresh. I'm new. I just cleansed my face. Like here, here I am. And so it's just constant in every year of motherhood too, you know, from having your newborn and what you think it's going to be like, and then, oh my gosh, I can't wait till they're, they can move around and it's easier. And then they get into the toddler phase and you think it's going to be easier. And then, oh my gosh, like they're asking all these questions all the time. And then the next stage. So it's just constant, just evolution and learning and trying to figure it out. Cause nobody has, you know, a manual to say, this is how it's going to be done. So mm-hmm. your toolbox and my toolbox are going to be totally different for what works for you and your healing and my healing. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's pretty cool to be able to learn from other people and, and see what other people are using and be able to take snippets and mm-hmm. use it for yourself. Make it your own. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you said that it's not a one size fits all. Like what's in my toolbox, it works for me because of my journey and what's in your toolbox is going to work for you. So always gathering and seeing what tools you could be using as you move into that next chapter. I love that. And also, I just think it's, it's okay to also recognize and know that like, you might not always use all the tools, Mm -hmm. like something that might've worked for you before. So like when I used to get up super early before, when I was a teacher to go to the gym, that was because that was the only time I had to go is if I didn't go at 530 in the morning, I was not going to get a workout in because the nights were filled with my kids activity. So like that was a non-negotiable, but for me, like that doesn't really fit into my lifestyle right now. So it's just knowing that it's also okay for those things not to fit you right now, Mm -hmm. right? Like those tools might not fit you in this stage where you are. And that's also okay. And giving yourself permission to be like, yeah, it's okay. I still have it. So maybe at some point it'll work, but if not, like give it, just like put it to rest right now. And you can always come back to that tool if you need to. Yes. So in your family life, is everybody on this journey with you? Or is it, (laughs) how does that work? Well, this will be aired live, right? No, I'm just kidding. No, I would say not. You know, I have two boys that live at home. So a 12 year old and a 15 year old. So having boys and then also having teenager, there's a lot of things that like I work on that I try to suggest or hint or say, Hey, like, what if you tried, they both play baseball, they both play travel ball. My oldest son just had elbow surgery last in October. So we've been working through the healing process and him not being able to play sports, which is a big deal in my household since June, basically. So really working on, I've been trying to talk about how about the mindset, the mental game is huge. I'm huge on the mental game, but not sometimes your kids and you'll find this as your son gets older, they don't always want to listen to you as a parent. So even if you might have all the tools that you have, they don't necessarily want to hear what they are. So it's been interesting. They hear it. I know because they use some things that I've said on each other, but I wouldn't necessarily say that like they're in their room, like quietly, like, you know, visualizing what they're going to be doing in baseball. Like maybe I would say, Hey, like, this is what I read. This is what a lot of people do. And then my husband isn't in that phase at all right now. We own a restaurant. And so the last two years have been 
really difficult as a small business owner and owning a restaurant. So, you know, it's been a lot of survival mode mentally. It's been a challenge because all the ups and downs of the industry and you kind of never know what's going to happen. So if you're constantly living in that fight or flight every single day, it really can wreak havoc on your mental state. So, you know, we've been kind of dealing and working, you know, on those things. But I also know that each person goes through their own journey. So Mm -hmm. I can't force anyone or suggest, Hey, this is what I think you should be doing. And, you know, I can try and send some podcast or some meditations along, but if somebody isn't open and ready, then you can't really force someone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just me at this moment, (laughs) but it creates a ripple effect. Yeah. I mean, at least that's what I've noticed for me. My journey, I've seen it in my world that because I've decided to go on this journey, that everybody else is slowly going their own way of doing it, creating it their own way, but everybody else, it creates a ripple effect. Yeah. So like you were saying, you can't force the healing or the tools, but I do think that what you're doing is so powerful. Oh, I know. And I know that the energy that I put out, you know, will eventually get absorbed hopefully by others. So I can't let that affect my energy. So I have to just keep going and keep doing my thing and keep working on the things that light me up and bring me, you know, passion and, and keep working on my mental state so that I don't go into a rabbit hole, you know, cause that can happen as well. So it's just, you know, working on that. Yeah. I love that. Earlier you were talking about visioning and fishing for it. And yeah. with it being January, a lot of people are wanting to start dreaming again. Yeah. And do you have something to sort of speak to that? A vision board can be done a couple different ways, many different ways, but you can really do what you want for a certain amount of time. So maybe six months, a year, you could do longer than that. Like these are my, my big, hairy, audacious goals, like for my life. But what I like to do is I really like to sit and work in pockets, like for business, like think about my business, like what, what do I want to have? How do I want to feel? How do I want to act in my business? I look at my relationships. So, you know, with my spouse, with my kids, you know, how do I want to feel in those? Where do we want to go? You know, if we want to be traveling and then what do we want to be doing? Like, what do that, does that kind of all encompass like as my family and really those are kind of, and then myself, like I I look at myself, I always put myself in my vision board as well. So again, how do I want to act? How do I want to feel? What do I want to do? Who do I want to be? So I really sit quiet and really think about all of those different things for myself, because I've tried writing like big goals down with numbers and, and it just never felt I guess an alignment for me. So I've really been in this stage of like, how do I want to feel and who do I want to be? And so that's why the word joy came up for me. And so, you know, I go on the internet, I find pictures, I find words, I find things like an image of like, so one of the things on my vision board is like a a girl swinging on a swing. Because for me, it's like, I don't even know who this is. But to me, that's like an image of fun. It's an image of joy. It's peace. Like you're happy, like you're just in that present moment. And so that's something that I want. And so for me, it's not necessarily all the material things, but it's like, where do we want to go? We want to go in an RV cool. Like let's like cut out a picture of an RV and like for the going across the United States, like what are all these things that we want to do together as a family? And then what I want to do, because I love to have like family goals too, and just put them on the vision board and and look at it every day. If you want to come up with a word of the year, you could do a word of the year. I love to do both of those things. So I do that too, but really it's about who do you, how do you want to feel? Who do you want to be? And how do you want to act? Like those are kind of the things that I encompass in my vision board when I, I do a vision board. Do you do one or what do you do? I love visioning and doing vision boards. And I love that you said, how do I want to feel? That is like the magic question. And for years I was vision boarding and writing my goals. Like you were saying, big audacious goals. And I never once asked myself, how do I want to feel? ever. So it was just like, you're just going on this hamster wheel then of trying to create, create, create and with your head down. Right. And so when you ask yourself, how do I want to feel then you can let that be your guide. Mm -hmm. You can use that as like, if I'm not feeling this way, then what needs to shift? You can start getting that curiosity about it. So I love that. That's one of your questions for your vision boarding. Cause when I started doing it in that way, like asking, how do I want to feel 
that's when everything shifted and changed. Yeah. yeah. If you're not feeling good, then, you know, you're going to feel out of alignment. And then the things that you want to see happen won't necessarily happen or might take longer to happen because you're not really feeling it. Like for some reason, you know, maybe it's your gut or your intuition. It's like, this just doesn't feel right. And so I'm really big on that. Like before I typically say yes to something, it's like, "Mm, how does this make me feel? And then also like, how much time is it going to take me to Mm -hmm. do this and be a part of that? Because if that's not going to work for me either, then I'm going to have to say no, which again is part of the boundaries. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, boundaries are so important. They are, especially as women, we don't give ourselves permission to say no, because we're going to be that good girl and we don't want to hurt people. Yeah. We want to please and we want to give of ourselves. We want everybody to just be happy. Most of the time we're compromising our happiness for compromising our joy. Yeah. So I love that you say boundaries are so huge. And earlier you asked me about how I vision board. I am a sticky note girl. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And a Pinterest girl. So I have my Pinterest vision board on there. But the biggest thing that works for me and has been the game changer is like post notes everywhere. I say I'm like brainwashing myself (laughs) because I don't always read them, but I know I see them. And so I feel like, oh, I know it's getting in there because I'm seeing the changes and I'm seeing myself evolve. So what I do is the same thing. How do I want to feel? And my word for this year's bloom was just that word just kept coming up and kept coming up. And so I said, okay bloom it is so I have that written out on a whiteboard right in front of me so I'm always looking at it and that is the what's been working really really well for me is like posted notes on the bathroom posted notes in my office (laughs) I used to have posted notes in the kitchen and then I was like it doesn't look that cute so we'll (laughs) we'll put them back in the office but yeah I just think we have to if we're not programming our minds if we're not putting all that good stuff in there somebody is something is getting in there so with me with these posted notes it's like my way of like feeling like I'm controlling what is getting put into my body, into my mind. Yeah. And that's worked really, really well for me. Part of like my morning, like ritual, I do have like some affirmations that I wrote down on like an index card. So like every morning, like when I'm doing my journaling or meditation, like I will just like reread them and like take a moment to like pause with each one and just feel that feeling of like joy or whatever I'm saying in my affirmations. But I have done that with my kids before too. And they actually have some on post-it notes. Now Mm -hmm. they have things that they want to see coming into life you know they have them in the bathroom so we have those up and it's like okay what do you want to do for the baseball team this year like what do you want to see happen like you know so we do that as well and it's really powerful it it really is yeah it really is powerful it's crazy how powerful and how easy it is it's so simple but yet it's not like a knowing to do that because I didn't always do that this just literally started for me and probably during the pandemic Mm -hmm. was the first thing I ever put on my mirror was I am enough and that was it that was just one thing nothing else and just having that in my mirror seeing the way my husband shifted the way I shifted I was like oh my gosh this has to work wow yeah Yeah. when I think like I am enough like just go it covers everything like I swear like if you could just do I am enough you could fill anything in after that or just say I am enough and it really encompasses like everything that you want it to encompass whether it's like I'm enough for yourself like for your relationship for your jobs like I'm enough for like if you're trying out for a team like whatever it is if you're trying to do a podcast you know like whatever it is like I am enough really like I feel like it encompasses everything like I'm enough to like make millions of dollars, like whatever it is, like I'm enough fill in the blank. Like that's powerful. Yeah. Even if we're just to start with just one thing and put it somewhere. And even if you don't look at it every day, know that you see it and that your subconscious, even though, though you don't notice it visually, you're noticing it. So yeah. Visioning is so important. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. And I, I'll put them like in the car too. Like I'll have like a post-it note or, you know, and it'll like, I'll put my mirror or my little mirror down. And then all of a sudden like, oh, it's like a surprise. Like, <laughs> or, you know, I put my index card with the different sayings, you know, my affirmations on there as well, because throughout the day, like it's crazy to do it one thing in the morning, but mm-hmm. throughout the day is really when it gets hard. Cause that's mm-hmm. when you like scroll social media or you've been talking to someone or you put an idea out and somebody's put it down. So it's, it's really like also affirming those things throughout the day. So even if you like set a timer on your phone and be like, okay, this is my lunchtime. Like I'm gonna take two minutes 
minutes and like, you know, read my affirmations and just reprogram yourself again, Mm -hmm. again, over and over, over and over. Yes. For me, I have it in my calendar on my phone. My brother gave me this brilliant idea that I just started doing is the different places on your phone with the, like you have your different boxes and underneath them, you have different words. You could put words under that. Yeah. That's I was like, awesome. this is a brilliant idea because I'm on my phone all the time. Right. And sometimes I'll get the notification on my calendar and I'll just like swipe because I'm busy. But when it's like right there in your face. Yeah. You can't, you can't miss it. Can't miss it. <laughs> There's actually an app that I use. It's an I am app. And so Ooh. you can ask it to send you any kind of like, if it's like, okay, I need personal development. I need self-love. Mm. I need healing anxiety ones. Like it'll send you what you want and you can pick, okay, I want one an hour or during this time mm. frame. I love it. Cause I can hear the little ding and I'm like, <laughs> what's, what's the there? Surprise? <laughs> what surprise are you sending me universe? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and it's just something different. You know, it's also like the state of surprise. Like it just brings me joy. Cause I'm like, Oh, what is this? And it's also, you know, that I, I don't know what it's going to be. So it's like building that energy up too. So it's a cool app. I like that one too. I don't even think I pay for it. So it's good. Yeah. It's called I am. Yeah. It's just an I am. Yeah. So with moms and creating their future while, like you said, you have all, you have kids, like you said, as the morning, you start your morning off and you're feeling good. And then you get to that midday and something happens. Like, how do you keep coming back? Sometimes I will literally go like, give myself a bath. Like I'm like, I'm going to go get a bubble bath. Like sometimes it's like removing yourself from the situation. If you can, maybe it's going and reading a book. Like I said earlier, it might be like, I need to go just to the bathroom real quick. Mm -hmm. You know, like I just need to go do this real quick. Maybe it's listening to a podcast. I listen to a lot of podcasts that bring me inspiration. So not ones that bring me down, that make me anxious, but ones that really are going to say some kind of nugget that I'm like, yes, like I'm like, yesing, And you got that girl <laughs> like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like the whole time, because it isn't, no one is ever going to be perfect. And I think that was the thing that I wish I had known as a younger mom. Like there is no perfect mom out there. Mm-hmm. There is no mom that is doing everything right. Checking off all the boxes all day long, every single day. It does not exist. So even if you see it on social media and you see someone's highlight reel, they are not showing you the struggle behind it. They aren't showing you like their kid having a tantrum in the grocery store. Like they're not showing you all of those, like their kid throwing something against the wall, like while they're eating dinner and they're like, why aren't you eating? They're not showing those things. So I think as a mom, like you have to also take those things with a grain of salt and not compare because they aren't really showing you the whole truth, right? (laughs) Maybe they're showing you. Yeah, exactly. Like he, he agrees. He's like, yes, that's true. But they're not showing you the whole truth. And so I think it's being realistic with like, okay, the things that I'm seeing, you know, in a magazine, on social media, in videos, like everyone's done up, everyone looks perfect. That's not real life for me. And and knowing that I'm not going to compare myself, that I am standing in myself, who I am as a mom, as a woman, as a wife, as Melissa, and I'm proud of who I am and I'm going to make mistakes and I'm not going to do everything right. And if I need to apologize, I will. But like knowing that nobody does it a hundred percent. Right. And I'm showing my kids that like, I make mistakes too. And like when they're parents and they have their own kids, they're going to make mistakes and that's okay. When they're in school, they're going to make mistakes. When they're playing on a sports team, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to fail. I fail as a mom every day, but I apologize if I need to, I get back up, we have a conversation about it and we move on. And so I think it's just recognizing that there are going to be those times that, yep, I'm not going to do the right thing. Yep. I'm going to turn into She-Hawk. It happens, whatever. But knowing that I can always come back to myself and I can always come back to my breath and I can always come back to that pause and I can always come back to the truth. And if I need to use my voice and communicate with my kids and my husband in a way that says, listen, yeah, I'm really stressed out right now. Like I'm really having a hard time. Sorry that that happened, but I love you. We're good here, but I just, I need a moment. And I think asking for help is such a big thing that like when I had my my kids when they were younger, I didn't want to ask for help because I wanted to wear that super mom cape, right? I wanted to do it all and show everyone that I've got it together. I don't need any help. I don't need you to hold the door for me, sir. I can have my baby's bag. I can have the stroller or the car seat over here. I can use my hip 
to open up this door. I don't need any help. And I think as a mom, realizing that you should ask for help because also you're giving that gift to whoever you're asking help for. They want to help you. Like you're denying them that gift if you don't ask and they think that you're good then. So they're not going to come and check on you. So asking for help is such a huge thing that I wish I did more of because I just thought it made me look weak as a mom. It made me look like I didn't have it all together, that I couldn't handle it. So I think for me, like that has been one of the things that I have really taken on is saying, yeah, I do need help. Yep. I need some help over here. I need you to take a kid here. I need you to watch my kids so I can record a podcast episode. I think that is the biggest gift that you can give yourself is asking for help. And it doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you not a good mom. It doesn't mean you don't have it together. It means that you're human. That was a lot there. (laughs) That was so good. That needed to be said. You're speaking straight to the heart of a new mom because it's so true. You think I don't want to look weak. I'm supposed to have it all together. And most of us growing up, our parents didn't ask for help. Like my mother never, never (laughs) asked for help. She just looked like superwoman. Yeah. And I know that there was times that she could have used that help so much. And there was times that so many moms could use that help so much. And all we have to do is like use our voice and say, help me. Yeah. And the fact that you're saying that is just, yeah, not too much. It needs to be said. And it's, it can be something small, you know, and it's with your spouse, you know, it's with everyone. It's with your kids. Like, I'm like, listen, guys. I need your help to pick up this house. Like I should not be picking it all up. It is not my stuff. Like we work as a family unit here. Let's work together because it's not just me. Like, yeah, I'm the mom, but like, that doesn't mean I have to cook everything and clean everything up and wash everything and do everything. This is a, this is a household unit. Like we all play a role. So it's asking your kids to help as they get of age to be able to do something, anything, you know, it's your spouse, it's your family, it's your parents. If they live close, it's your friends. Like I have such a great community of people that I have met in my life through my kids activities, you know, and my family, a lot, my, most of my family lives around here who I ask for help all the time. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm asking for help again. And if they can't, they'll say no, Yes. you know, like give them the opportunity to say no, but if you don't ask, you'll never know. And so it just takes that courage to be like, you know what? I really actually do need help. Can you like watch your child, my child, while like, I just would like to go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Like I would like a half an hour, like to myself. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it doesn't mean you don't love your child. It doesn't. It just means like, I just need to clear my head. Like I would just want to do something quickly. Can I just do this like 15 minutes, like whatever it is. And it's, it's a gift to, to be able to let someone help you. That's how I look at it. It's a gift. It really is because the people that say yes to helping you are most of the time saying it from a place of love, especially when you're talking to your family and your friends and the people that already love you. Like there are a few people out there that will say yes, just because they don't know how to say that. No. But When you're talking to your family, especially about the kids, they want to be a part of that. Right. I know it is because he's so adorable and you want to be with him all the time. Like that's how I was like with my little one. I was like, oh my gosh, you are coming everywhere with me. You're doing everything with me. But then I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm actually pretty tired and I would like like a minute to myself. And so then it was like, okay, like sure. I take you everywhere. And I do all these things and we do music class and we do all these fun things, but like mama needs like 10 minutes. Like I would like to go like get my nails done, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. And so it's, it's flipping that story that maybe you've heard, maybe you didn't, you know what I mean? Like when you, of what you thought a mom was supposed to be like and saying like, yeah, okay, maybe that's what I heard, but like, this is how I'm gonna, this is my interpretation. Mm -hmm. Like, this is how I'm, this is what works for me right now. Mm -hmm. And maybe in, you know, two months, it won't work for you, but like, yeah, this is my interpretation of my mom, of being a mom right in this moment, because Mm -hmm. your kids are constantly changing. Oh yeah. Their (laughs) their personalities, they're growing, they're teething. It's like the puberty, like all the things, you know? So it's just going with the flow and like, you're never going to be the same mom all the time because everyone is always changing. Yeah. I was just saying earlier today, like when you have children, you notice, like you notice so much of like life changing because every moment they're changing, they're evolving. It's just right in front of your eyes. Yeah. 
And it's such a blessing. And it's like, for me, I was so blessed because I left my teaching career and was able to work from home. I didn't call myself a stay at home mom because I was always working from home, Mm -hmm. but I was so blessed to be able to do that so that I could soak in those minutes. But then, you know, being at home with my kids and I was with them all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I did need a break. And it's okay to be like, I need a break. Like I do need a minute to myself because when you have little kids, you know, especially if you're breastfeeding and you're doing all the things, it's like, they always need you if they won't take a bottle. So it's like, I need to like go out for just a walk real quick and like, just clear my head and just like take some breaths and like put my feet in the grass and like, I'll be right back and I'll be really good. But like, just give me five minutes, please. You know, and it can be as simple as that too. How was your experience with being a mom that worked from home? It was great considering I wasn't teaching because when I was teaching, obviously like I would, somebody else would have had my kids and I would have missed all of those things. So it was such a blessing to be able to be at home with both of them. I was home for seven and a half years before I went back to teaching. And now I'm not at teaching anymore. It's like a whole nother podcast, but, but it was amazing. But I had that mentality of, I have to do it all. I have to look like I have everything together. I want to show up at all the classes. I want to, my baby's going to be well-behaved, you know, all those silly things, but it was just like, that was my mentality. But I also knew I had to get out of the house. Like I'm very much a people person. So I looked into my community for, I knew that leaving teaching, I was around people all the time, but when you're at home and you're working from home, you don't have that support all the time. It's like you and baby, right? And I was like, I need some adult interaction. So when I would do all the things when my kids were little or when my first son was little, because I didn't have my set next son until he was almost three. So we had almost three years together, but I really had to crave other adult interaction because I loved him, but I was like, he's not talking back to me. Like I need that back and forth interaction, right? And you're like, oh, I love you. And you do all this. So like when we would sign up for music class, it was really for me, (laughs) like, so that I could also like meet all these other moms. And then you would have that conversation, like, how's it going for you? What's happening here? Oh my God, he's not sleeping through the night. We're teething. What about you? You know, that's where those bonds are formed when they're little with all the other moms that are going through the same thing that you're going through. So for me, when I was, you know, working from home, when they were little, I, those bonds and me getting out of the house, because honestly, so I wouldn't go crazy because I was like, I need human interaction. Like I need adult interaction. And my husband was working. So it was like me and baby, me and toddler. And I was like, I love to play, but I don't want to play all day. Can you take a little nap? please. Like, and like two hours would be amazing. I love you, but two hours. So it was, it was finding like, and that's when I was working at home, I was selling jewelry and that was my time to be able to get out on my own. So that was like a blessing to also have that. So like, I still had something that I was working on that was separate from my kids and my husband. That was like me, but like finding those other moms was so important when I had my kids were little because I didn't want to feel alone. Like I was like, is this, this is really hard. I didn't know it was going to be this hard. I knew it, but like, it's really hard and challenging mentally. (laughs) They say it takes a village. And I posted once, like, where's the village? (laughs) Where are you already? Village, come help me. Right. Because it does, because you go, you know, you're, you're there all day. And so, you know, for me, I was like, okay, I live at the beach. So like we would go out to the beach and I would meet other moms and then we would meet up and go for walks. And so that was like my saving grace, really. I mean, I loved being at home and it was such a gift, but like, I definitely needed to also have something else that was mine at the same time, but making those other mom connections was so important for me. And I think for moms in general, just so that you have that support system of other moms, because other people just, just not the same, unless they're kind of going through it or they've been through it. I don't know what you think. Oh yeah. I completely agree. When I decided to pivot my old podcast, the Backroads podcast, which was all about the traveling and living life fearlessly. And then I became a mom and that changed. (laughs) Yeah. And And so then I created the Make Life Fun podcast and I was like, I need my soul family. Like I need my mom tribe. I need that. And I started looking for it. I started looking for it because I was during COVID, of course. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> and so I started looking for it online and started looking at different mommy groups. And it just, there was, it wasn't what I was looking for. It wasn't the upliftment. It wasn't the, let me cheer for you. Let me pray for you. Let me help you in that way. Yeah. It was like, it was more of like, woe is me. Yeah. And it was a lot of complaining with no, no reframe. Ah, no solution, right? Yes. And you give the solution, but then it goes right back to the no. We all have our problems. We all have our issues. I'm not saying that. Like we have, we have to talk about it, right. but we have to have that open mind of like, I'm talking about it to gain insight, to gain solution, to get exactly. that aha. And so that's what I was looking for and I couldn't find it. And so I was like, well, I guess I better create it. <laughs> So that's how this whole journey even began. You need your mom tribe. You need your soul family. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree with you. So I'm glad that you you started on this path and this journey to doing that because it is like motherhood can be, you can lose your joy mm -hmm. for sure in motherhood. And it's reframing the things like, oh, I have to versus like, I get to. So it wasn't like I had to stay at home or what. It's like, I get to stay at home. Like, look, what a gift. And it's hard sometimes to reframe certain things. I was hearing, I don't know if it was on another podcast or where, but it was like, okay, lately, something that has shifted for me is I used to always have to put my dishes away and have a spot clean kitchen before I could go to bed. Or I would literally lay in bed, like almost in a panic attack, girl, I'm not kidding. Like I was like, am I sweating? Like what's happening? And I was like, I'd have to get up and go do it. And I'm like, no, I can just leave it. I can. And so, but now I can like, I literally have like clean dishes in the dishwasher and my sink is full right now in this moment. And I'm okay with that because like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. Like I don't have to go clean up 20 times today. Like just leave it and to move on. And like, they're still going to be there. And so like, I'll have one of my kids help me when they get home. Or like, you know, if my, if my husband was coming home earlier, like I'd be like, Hey babe, can you help with it? You know, it's like, I don't have to carry the weight of the world. I don't have to do it all. And knowing that like, it's going to be okay. And I'm giving myself permission to have dirty dishes. The world isn't going to end. Like that was such a struggle for me when I had little kids. And so it's just letting that go and knowing like as a young mom, you know, or having littles at home, it's like you can let those things go and like go take a nap if you need to during nap time, like you can let that go and go pull a bath. Like if your little one's napping, like you can actually go play with your baby. Like, you know, it's going to be okay. And I think we also have to have that mentality. Like it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. You know, and just that's something that I wish that I had done earlier because I didn't. And, but now I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I could go to bed and sleep with them and I'll just do in the morning. It's cool. Oh, I love that you brought up dirty dishes. So this new this year, I like tried to keep the sink clean <laughs> before I go to bed. So I've been trying to put it as a new habit of like when I drink my tea at night, because I always have my night tea. So right before I can have my tea, I'm gonna do the dishes. Well, what's happening, what's the reality is I make my tea, Everett wants me, the tea is cold, the dishes aren't clean. That's what happens. That's the reality. Yes. It's the reality. And so what are you doing? Are you leaving them or are you, you oh, going to yeah. So you're doing, so are you going to keep that habit or are you going to be like, do I really need that habit? Why was I <laughs> starting that habit? What are you, I'm pushing you right now. What are you going to do? It. I love it so much. So yeah, so that habit started because I love waking up and having that, walking into the kitchen and it's like fresh start for the day. Yeah. So I love that. So when I get that and it happens, it's like, it's a moment of joy, right? And so I was like, well, if I love it so much, maybe I can make it into a habit. And so I'm still going to keep trying to build it, but I'm not going to let it stress me out. I'm going to laugh <laughs> yeah. when I go and see the cold tea and the dirty dishes, <laughs> but I'm going to keep trying to build that habit because it does, it does bring me joy to see the kitchen clean and very start in the morning, but it's not realistic always. Definitely right now, now that he's on the move, like when yeah. he was just yeah. sitting there, it was a whole different story. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so like for me, like when I do that, I'm leaving the dishes there. It's because, okay, well, I'm in on a podcast with you or I'm working on something for my business or I'm doing something else for, I went and got a bath 
bath. Like I'm all about baths right now. I don't know why I'm like, I swear I take like four bubble baths a week. I don't know. I'm just soaking. And so maybe I'm just like cleansing out 2021 and 2020. I don't know, but, but I'm getting a lot of baths. That's why I keep bringing it up. But for me, then I could refrain it and be like, when I get up in the morning and those dirty dishes are there, like, wow, I got to go get a bath. Like that, leaving those there gave me the opportunity to go have some peace and quiet and enjoy a bubble bath, you know? So I'm trying to reframe those things and be like, okay, well, they're still there and it would have stressed me out, but what did I get to do instead? That's what I'm doing. Yep. I like that. What did I get to do instead? Yeah. That's a brilliant question. What did I get to do instead of doing those dishes that are still going to be there? They're still going to be there. And they might be there tomorrow. I'll send you a picture and be like, yeah, they might be there. I don't know. Cause we got like basketball later tonight and then we're going to go bowling. So I'm like, Maybe we'll eat dinner out. I don't know. Who knows, girl? It's like, it's life's too short. Those dishes. Sounds like you guys are having all the fun. (laughs) We're trying, you know, joy, trying to find joy because I mean, to be honest, like my kids will be home in a half an hour, 45 minutes, somewhere in there. My older son is the manager of the basketball team. My younger son, and it's just going to be me and him. So like, I could literally sit home and just work and then he could like play on the PS4 or go outside and then but I'm like, you know what? Like, let's try and do something fun because I'm trying to find more joy. So I'm like, maybe just the two of us can like have a date and go do something together, just the two of us. So I was like, we could go bowling. We could watch Eternals. It's really like big Marvel fans. That's my goal. My goal is like, you know, when you have and your kids get older and if you're still able to be at home and work or whatever you're doing, you know, is to get a majority of my work done during the daytime. So then when my kids are home, I typically am always driving around basketball, baseball somewhere that I can then put them like I'm present with my kids. So I actually deleted Facebook and Messenger off of my phone so that I'm not constantly in the scroll of like, oh, let me check and see what's going on. So I'm really proud of myself for that this year. Amazing. How is that going? I will tell you there, it, sometimes it's very difficult and I've wanted to re put it on my phone a couple of times, but I have not. Mm-hmm. And that is where the win is. I'm like, but I haven't done it yet. And here we are. What is it? The 11th, 13th, 13th, yeah. 14th, uh, whatever it is, 13th, I think. So, and I haven't done it yet and it's been off and I'm, I'm surviving, but I just find when I go to my computer, then <laughs> I have like a ton of messages or notifications to like check out. And some of them I do. And some I'm like, yeah, they might still be there tomorrow. It's okay. But what did I get to do instead? You know? So yeah. So it's, it's definitely a struggle because you can get in that habit of just checking it all day long. It's like, oh my God, how many times did I pick my phone up today? Holy Mm -hmm. crap. How much time did I just waste? If it wasn't productive time Mm -hmm. that I was like posting something on social Mm -hmm. media, but just scrolling. And I will say like, I do give myself some time to be like, you know what? Like you have worked really hard. You've done all these things. Like this is like, you're giving yourself 20 minutes just to scroll and like find something funny, like find a meme, like whatever, like give yourself like, okay, here's some time. But I just don't have that that time to be on there for like three hours scrolling anymore. So, and that is so good that you had that thought in your mind and that awareness that this is where my time is getting sucked away from me and I'm going to make it take my time back. You like yeah. bought time back. Yeah, absolutely. And like, it's also like the comparison, right? You start like, Oh, or you go there to send a message. And then you're like 30 minutes later, why did I even come here? You know? And then you're like, Oh, I was going to send a message. And I didn't even send the message because you saw somebody's post and then somebody else's. And then you got like sucked into the rabbit hole. And then maybe you're starting to compare yourself and like, Oh, look what they did. I haven't done that yet. And then it's just like, yeah, I don't want to feel icky. I want to feel joy. So I'm going to delete it and just see what happens. Absolutely. Why not? I just turn off all my notifications. Like that has been my, that's been the game changer. The day that I decided to just turn them all off, all of them. Yeah. And I was just like, if I want to go there, I'll go there. So I'm right there with you. Like, I don't want to get sucked for an hour, 30 minutes, just scrolling. And another thing I've done is just deleted what isn't bringing me joy on my social. Like it used to be like, Ooh, I'm going to hurt feelings. They don't even know. (laughs) They don't even know. They don't even care. Yeah. And so giving yourself that permission to be like, this isn't bringing me joy. Like this isn't what I want on my feet too. Yeah. I think is also, even if it brought you joy last year, Mm -hmm. if it's not bringing you joy today, like why not? Absolutely. It, always reevaluate, you know, like what's bringing me joy right now. And maybe it's like, yeah, I just need to delete some, you know, or just unfollow some people for a little while. Cause I'm finding myself comparing or I'm finding myself feeling weird and just like, okay, cool. Like it just for a season, maybe it's for a couple months and you'll come back. 
and see how you feel. And that's okay too. Yep. That is more than okay. What are you working on right now? What am I working on? Well, I have my podcast. So that was a big undertaking. So I just launched actually on 1-11-22. I launched my re- the Reawakened Mom podcast. And so it is about all the things that we have talked about. It is about, you know, moms not putting themselves first. It is about feeling alone. It is about struggles that moms have gone through. You know, whether it's, I have one of my podcasts that I just launched was about infidelity. Another one is about empty nester. So what the heck do you do when your kids are gone and out of the house? I have another mom that's coming on and talking about her breast implants and how she's getting them removed. And so, you know, it's really sharing women's stories. I feel like now more than ever, just like what we've talked about, women need community. And as moms, especially because we wear all the hats in the momhood, you know, we're doing all the driving, we do a lot of the cooking, we do all the the event planning where our kids are going, all the shopping, all the things to provide them a great life. And so that can sometimes get really heavy and you need somebody to talk to. And so I want to really share women's stories that not that they've overcome, because I don't think anybody ever overcomes. People are always working through something, but just stories so that you can hear somebody else that has gone through it and gotten through it and that you can too. I think that is really the biggest thing and just sharing mindset, like we've talked about and you know, how you can shift your mind and this place of really coming home to yourself and making sure that, you know, maybe if you are a new mom, that you aren't losing yourself in this amazing motherhood, because I think that happens so often is that we put our dreams and our goals and our ambitions on hold. And so it's just making sure you're coming back to yourself and who, who you truly are. So I'm working on that right now. And I just launched and super exciting. And it feels really great to hear the feedback feedback that I wanted to receive, which was, you know, people needed to hear that, or this came at the right, exactly the right moment. And really that's for me, what it's all about. It's, it's basically like a passion project because I've been there. And so I want to help other women and moms just feel like they're not alone and have a space to hear and, you know, a community to come to for support and inspiration and motivation. So that's a little something that I'm working on. (laughs) Yes to all of it. Yeah. So it's you exciting. You should be so proud of yourself. Yeah, I am. And I, that is one of the things as moms, we do not celebrate ourselves enough. And so we have to celebrate ourselves for all the little things, even every day, like, oh, I got my kids to school on time. Like that is a win. I showered today, like whatever it is, seriously, like celebrate that because we are so hard on ourselves, all the things we didn't get done. And so we have to realize, like, we have to celebrate those things, all the things that we did do and did get done. And you had a baby, good Lord, you know, like your body is a miracle. So thank your body every single day for the miracle that it is. So that's what I'm working on. And it's amazing. And I can't wait to see where it goes and more of the conversations that are had on, you know, the podcast and in our Facebook group and just all the things I just, I love it all. So it feels really good right now. It's bringing me joy. And that's the most important thing. Bring it back around. What is bringing you joy and do more of that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) So where can the listeners go and clap for you and celebrate you and just spend some time? I'm on Instagram. So you can look up um, melissa.clampit. I'm on Instagram. So you can find me on there. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can look up the Reawakened Mom podcast. If it's something that interests you, basically everywhere, Spotify, Apple, Google podcast, which I don't understand how that works, but I was like, well, I guess I should do Google. I don't but I don't kind of get it, but okay. But all of those places. And then if you're looking for a community, we have um, the Reawakened Mom Facebook group as well. So you can come in and just share. We'll talk more about the podcast and stuff on there too. So yes. Oh, this conversation has been so good for my soul. It is Aww. nice to talk to a mom that has been through it and going through it and have these ahas of yes. like, this is what I did. And this is what I'm doing now. It's so much needed. And the fact that we were talking about joy today and we were talking about asking for help today, like those are big topics Yeah, and moms need to hear it. Yeah. Is there anything else on your heart that's feeling like called to say? 
I just think the biggest thing is really giving yourself grace as a mom, you know, and I said, asking for help earlier. I think that especially these last like two years, like so much more has been on our plate, you know, kids that aren't going to school. So a lot of moms have had to take on that teacher role. A lot of moms have left their, their jobs or their careers because they've had to take on different roles and maybe they wanted to in the first place, they wanted to come back home and have that role. But um, some things have, I feel like been forced on us to kind of take on extra that we didn't necessarily want or ask for, which is for a lot of people. So I think for us to be able to find little pockets in your day for you is so important. And even if it's like you tell your kids, listen, there's no TV or everyone's going to go read a book. Mommy's going to go read a book too. And you just have like a half an hour of silent time, like whatever it is, just making sure that you are finding time for you in your schedule is so great for your mind. It's so great for your body. It's so great for your spirit to really be able to put yourself first because you are the most important person that you have. Like you're with yourself 365 days, 24 hours a day. Like you're with yourself more than anyone else. So you need to make sure that you're taking care of yourself first before you're taking care of everybody else, because then you're going to just be able to bloom so much more for everyone else. Right. So I would say that would be like my last thing is just to reiterate that is just making sure that, you know, yes, you're a mom and that's so important and such a great thing that you get the privilege to do is be a mom. Right. But make sure that you're not forgetting yourself along the way. Oh, so good. Thank you so much, Melissa. Well, you're welcome. This has been such a gift to talk to you today. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.